In this lesson, we're going to start covering the attacker's methodology. This is the time where we get to start actually thinking like a bad guy, and we start figuring out how they're going to break into our networks. Here you can see the six steps to the hacker's methodology. We perform our reconnaissance, we scan and enumerate our networks, we gain access, we then escalate our privileges, we maintain our access, and we cover our tracks and place back doors. Now the pre-attack steps are the first two. This is where we're going to be rather passive and when we start finally touching the network and scanning and enumeration. Once we have all the information gathered, we're going to move into the exploitation phase, which is gaining access and beyond. Notice the risk level. We increase our risk as we move towards the right. As we get into stage 3, 4, 5, and 6, we have much more risk of getting caught because we're on somebody's network. It's fairly green in performing reconnaissance, and you'll find out why as we move through these phases. The first phase we're going to talk about is performing reconnaissance. So, performing reconnaissance is the systematic attempt to locate, gather, identify, and record information about a target. What does that really mean? Well, it means I'm trying to figure out as much information as I can about the organization that I'm trying to attack, in this case perform a penetration test on, so that I can start learning about them. That's going to allow me to do a lot better job of attacking later. The thing with hacking is it really is about 90% preparation, 10% execution. A lot of people see it in the movies and go, oh, I'm going to hack into somebody, and immediately they're in the network. It doesn't really work that way. So we have to gather a lot of information first. We have to gain those accesses. This phase is also known as what's called footprinting because we're actually starting to figure out what the footprint of the network is, where are the attack vectors that we can use, what are the methods that we're going to use when we actually go to exploit later on. Reconnaissance techniques can include a wide variety of things, including social engineering, dumpster diving, email harvesting, and open source internet research. We're going to talk about all of these in a separate le lecture later. Uh, and we're going to go really in depth because Performing reconnaissance is probably the most important step of ethical hacking. It's where you get the basis for all future attacks. The big thing that you really have to note here in performing reconnaissance and this footprinting phase is that it's only passive. So I'm never actually going to reach out and touch that organization. I'm going to do everything from a distance. This is going to allow me to protect myself from getting caught and make the organization not know that I'm coming. We really want to be a surprise when we go and attack them, right? When we go into phase two, we get into scanning and enumeration. Again, this is another pre-attack step. We're trying to gather more information. So I've done everything I can in the open source world, and now I'm going to move into actual scanning. This is when I first actively connect to the system and get a response to identify open ports and services. You'll see on the right side of the screen, I have Nmap listed. It is by far one of the most common scanning tools used out there. It is a great tool, and if you are going to sit for the Certified Ethical Hacker exam, you have to understand how to use Nmap, and you have to know the command line uh, usage of Nmap. We'll cover that again in a separate lecture and a lab, uh, but for right now just, just remember that scanning is an important step here. Enumeration is an in-depth information gathering about a target. So I can start figuring out what share drives they're using, what accounts are on the system, what software versions they're using of different things. That again is going to help me compile this information to build a better target map before I start my attack. I really want to know that my attack is going to be successful before I ever try to launch it, and to do that I really have to know everything about that system. Again, here in step two, this is the first time we do active information gathering. Step one was all completely passive, never touching the victim systems. In step three, we're going to move on to gaining our access. So in gaining access, we're going to perform our exploits for the first time. This is where we actually are going to try to get into the system. This can be something like a social engineering technique, uh, something like a spear phishing email. We can try going in through their open wireless connections by doing wireless hacking. We can go in through an unpatched system and use a known vulnerability, something like a, um, a Microsoft patch that they haven't installed for Windows. Uh, we can go in through a system vulnerability itself. We can go in through web applications or backdoors, buffer overflows, Trojans, the list goes on and on. There's a ton of different client-side and remote exploitation attacks. We'll talk more about those in depth later on, but just for right now, realize that this is when we actually are going out, reaching out, and touching this network, trying to break in. The next step we're going to do is the escalation of privileges. So if I was successful in gaining my access, I now have a user account, most likely. I want to elevate that to an admin, system, or root access, so I can elevate those privileges uh, and get the complete access on the system. I can do this through exploiting a vulnerability or a bug in an application of the operating system. Uh, for example, one of the most famous ones that we do in ethical hacking is an old one for Windows XP and Windows Server 2003. It's the uh, Microsoft 2008-067, uh, which was a vulnerability that was exploited by the Conficker worm. This allows us to actually take over a computer as a system level user 
which really gives us permission to do anything we want on that particular workstation or server. After you do privilege escalation, the attackers have full control over the system or network. This is once you get admin rights on the workstation, I can do anything I want on the, on the workstation. If even better, if I can get a domain admin, that's going to allow me to do anything I want to any workstation or server on that domain, which is really what you want when you're attacking an office or corporate environment, because it's really going to give you the most bang for your buck once you're in there. So once we've done this privilege escalation, the next thing we want to do is we want to maintain our access. So if I get one admin account and he realizes I was on there, he's going to reset his password or he's going to delete the account and then I'm going to be kicked out. So when I maintain my access, what I really want to do is I want to start getting additional usernames, additional passwords, laterally move on to other targets. So if I got in on Joan's workstation, I now want to get over to Jim's workstation. And I want to spread myself out through the network and dig in deep. To do this, I can use things like network sniffers, I can steal additional passwords, laterally move on to other workstations or servers, open ports, open ports in the firewall, for instance, so that I can then have other callouts happening, starting additional services that will call me back, lots of different things we can do. Again, once you get on that machine, you want to survey the host. You want to understand what it looks like and what it is. So if I get onto a victim machine through a spear phishing email, I don't know what I'm actually on. So I have to start figuring out, am I on a user's workstation or am I on an admin's workstation? Am I on Windows or am I on Linux? All those type of things are things we're going to have to figure out. And so we're going to look for other people on the system. So if I get on the system, is there another hacker on the system? Is there another pen tester on the system? Are the security defenders there? Am I alone? These are the things I want to start looking at. My goal here is to get persistent access. I want to get on and I want to hold on. Now once I'm on and I have multiple methods to get back on, I can start doing things like my data exfiltration, stealing their information, data compromise, changing it, taking over other systems, and keep expanding that access and maintaining the access and doing what it was I came there to do in the first place. The final step in the attacker's methodology is covering your tracks and placing back doors. At this point, what we're going to be doing is making sure that the defenders and the system administrators can't find the fact that I got in or how I got in. And the way we would do this as an attacker is we want to erase the evidence of our attack. We'll delete temp files. We'll edit log entries. Uh, we can take previous stage malware if we use, for instance, if I have a two-stage malware where I drop the first piece to then elevate into the second piece, I would then erase the first piece because I no longer need it. Modifying my log files, I might change access times or user identities. I can hide files and folders. I can use alternate data streams. I can install rootkits or backdoors. I can set up callbacks for designated times, all sorts of things so that the admins and the local defenders can't find out that I'm there on their system. These are the kind of things we want to do when we cover our tracks. So those are the six steps of the attacker's methodology. Again, this was a very brief overview. We're going to go into each one of these in depth. We're going to talk about the tools that we use for this. We're going to talk about everything that we need to take out these steps as we go through the ethical hacker's methodology. And we'll start that in the next lesson, adding on the steps that the ethical hacker will use. If you enjoyed the video, I hope you subscribe, and I hope you keep following and sharing it with your friends. Till next time.